So my next guest doesn't hold anything back from trading. He's been through the highs of having six figure days to losing everything and moving back in with his parents. His book Cash Rules is a thoroughly good read and a warning for any trader who thinks this job is easy and David has kindly given his time to talk about markets, the ups and the downs and what it's like starting your own trading prop firm. So David, you were 40 years old, dead broke and sleeping on your dad's sofa. How did that happen? Well, I'd say out of my own stupidity, my own stupidity, my own stubbornness, and you know, there's you, you get some bad breaks along the way in trading. So combination of all three, and yes, ended up 40 years old, dead broke. Not only dead broke, my wife had just left me. I was living in a foreign oh, country, didn't speak a word of the language, didn't have any friends, didn't have any job possibilities. Um, yeah, and my trading was awful so yeah it was it was pretty pretty bad yeah well you don't really see that on uh instagram traders do you i guess that's the the reality of it you have lots of ups and downs yeah no all you see is the you know the the fast cars and the big houses and the fancy you know holidays vacations no you don't see you don't see the the downside of it and again i and it's just not me again my my story might be a little extreme <laughs> But uh, as you know, as a trader, you know, every trader has ups and downs. And, um, you know, if you're in the game long enough, you're going to have awful days, awful trades. And, you know, it's it's not much fun. And most traders don't want to hear about that. They want to hear about, you know, the good times, the, you know, making millions and, um, you know, having these monster trades. But yeah, as, as we know, trading is not trading is not like that yeah. all the time. That, that's that's why I liked your book because it actually does talk about, you know, it's very real as in you don't hold anything back. You sort of give the high points and the low points. And that's, yeah, as you say, a lot of people want the, the high things, but there is a cost to trading. And, you know, it's not always just in terms of money. It's emotional. It's time. Like some people, as you did, lose partners over it. Some people... You know, gamble away the house deposits, lose it, and then lose the partners that way. And also, you know, if it might take you a decade to get profitable, I mean, I think that would be extremely unlucky. But there is a lot of variance in this business. You know, you you can do everything right, but just due to rotten luck, not make any money for like two, three, five years, and just quit. And you know, someone else could have done the exact less effort than you but place different trades and due to variance, they, they could have come out a lot better. And you can almost be fooled into thinking you're a good trader just because you have a streak of like one or two years and it, it's just not really like that, is it? Yeah, the, tra the trading gods are cruel. And like you said, it's, you know, yes, skill does matter, your strategies, you know, whether you have edge, your execution, all those things matter. But luck plays a big, big part of it. You know, you could be trade, you could have been trading for those, you know, the 10 years before COVID hit, and the volatility, you know, spiked up and we had, a, you know, a couple of amazing years of trading and, you know, not made a penny and got wiped out right before this, you know, the, 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 the gods were gracious and yeah. we got some good trading. So, yeah, there's there's so much there's so much go that goes into it. And, yeah, you know, you said, it, you know, it can take one, two, five, ten years. That's if you're lucky. I mean, you know, as you know, the vast, vast majority of traders fail, you know, and. Yeah, those odds are I've heard anywhere from you know ninety percent and higher. So, yeah, not only does it take a lot of time, that's that's if you, if you're fortunate. Yeah, but, you know, but it's like you said, it, it, there's there's stuff out of your control that can give you that push or can you know give you a you know be that that wind in your face that stops you from making money. So yeah, there's some there's so many factors that goes that that go into it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people who did start trading during those golden years, you know, sort of March, April 2020, we had GameStop, AMC, all of those, you know, crazy things. I think it was Hertz that was yeah. bankrupt and then they st still raised money. No, it was um, crazy. You know, all of those crazy things. But all of those people are now gone just because they don't have any risk management. You know, it's when, when you were making money, it's very easy to, to think it's all down to skill. 
And then, you know, as Warren Buffett said, it's only when the tide goes out you find out who's been swimming naked. And you know, the typical thing when new traders especially are holding a loss is to take on more risk because they don't want to crystallize that loss and it gets worse and then it snowballs. And then before you know it, you're down half your account because you didn't want to take a small loss because of your ego. So it's it's hugely, yeah, dependent on, on when you trade. And yeah, you took the Facebook IPO trade, um, which I think had an element of bad luck in it as well, didn't it? Yeah, you know, it seems like, yeah. I, I think most traders complain that, you know, they always, you know, oh, the market's got me, I'm unlucky, all that. But I honestly think I've had, a you know, my more than my fair share of <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, and I, I'll, I'll go further on what you were saying. Yeah, again, the big, the big problems, I think these, you know, a lot of these traders with, you know, these traders who started in 2020, 2021, the big problem is, you know, I think I almost think it's better to learn, to learn how to trade and when the market's slow, when it's tough. And then when it gets good, you're like, oh, wow, you know, this is amazing and you're ready for it. But, you know, these traders who jumped in, you know, during 2000, well, let's say the last part of 2020. 2021, it was, you didn't have to be a skilled trader to make money, you'd buy anything, you know, and, and, it, and it went up. And, you know, people get fooled into thinking, oh, wow, I've got, to, you know, I'm, I'm, really, I'm so good at this, I got the Midas touch, so, you know, I've done this well, so let me, you know, use more capital, let me, you know, let me ask my, you know, my parents if they'll give me money. And of course, it always ends badly. So yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's it. And it's, you know, I hate to I hate to see it. It's it is tragic because people get themselves yeah. in a lot of trouble, and they get into trading for the wrong reason. You know, it's and I, I you know I've been in the game twenty three years and I know how it works. I go through cycles. You know, when the market's going up, when things are crazy, when they hear about my friends or you know people around me hear about me making money, everyone wants to be a trader. You know, and I remember I, I mean I can even remember back to the you know nineties and the internet bubble when the you know the market's going. Up. Everyone would be a trader. Everyone wants to be a trader. And I remember it, you know, in, you know, when, when 2008, 2009 was great. Everyone, my friends, I want to be a trader. But when it's dead and when it's tough, you know, these last couple of years, as you know, you don't have too many people go, I want to be a trader. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, that's what I ask these people like, wait, where are you? You know, when I was dead broke, you weren't begging me to become a trader. You know, <laughs> where, where, where were you then? But, you know, when, when the going's good, it's, it, it does, it seems so easy. But, um, yeah. There's again, it usually wipes, you know, we have the, the market turns and then it wipes out these, you know, these people who are either some people are in it for the right reason, but the majority aren't. And uh, trading is tough as it is. You can't you can't be in it because, oh, this looks easy. I hear about everyone making money. You know, I want to give this a spin. No, you have to be in it for the right reasons. You have to be passionate about it. This is this is this is what you have to want to be. Want to yeah. Do. Yeah. I think sort of grit and just grit. an enjoyment of the actual business are sort of crucial. If, if you don't really have them, you, you aren't going to be motivated when it gets hard and you aren't going to be disciplined to stick to everything as well. Uh, so I think those two traits are like necessary. I don't know if I've missed, missed any others, no, do you think? I agree. You know, it's hard work, especially when you're starting. You know, now I'm fortunate enough, I can, you know, I, you know, I have some freedom. I can take some time off. I work, you know, a few hours a week. But, you know, when you first start trading, you better bust your ass. You better yeah, be in front yeah. of the screen. You better be watching. And then you quickly learn how painful it is to take a losing trade. How, you know, what it feels like to have a losing day, have a losing week, have a losing month. It's, it's no fun. If, you know, if you're not in it for the right reasons, you quickly find out, you know, this is, this, is, this is more than I bargained for. You, like I said, you could be really lucky and you could jump in right exactly right time 2021 and oh wow this is easy every day is winning every day you know i'm i'm green every day but that quickly ends and you'll get wiped out but yeah grit you're right grit determination passion um you know you got to have that competitiveness that's a big trade i think you know you got to compete yeah. you you know we're talking about how what the odds are you know of succeeding in this business and how long it might take you know, if you're not a competitive bastard, you're not going to make it, you know, like it's, it, this is for the, you know, this is for, the, this is for the strong, this is for the tough. Um, and not, you know, of course, not physically tough, but mentally tough. Mm. And, um, and you've got, you've got to, you've got to have that passion. Again, I, you know, I, my, I, I, 
you know, I wanted to be a trader. It wasn't, I didn't know any other traders. It, it was on me. I, I wanted to be it. It wasn't, I didn't hear a friend who got rich quick. This is what, this is what I want to do. This is, what, this is what my passion was. And, you know, I'm sure, sure the same with you. And, you know, mm -hmm. the traders I've seen that make it, you know, long time are the guys who have, have the passion and who bust their ass. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's definitely necessary. I mean, for me, I think it was, um, you know, I was still in college sinking pints and not doing very well on my college work when Northern Rock in the UK went under and I remember seeing headlines and you know it, it sort of jumped 25 percent in one day and I was thinking that's crazy like imagine if you knew how to actually take advantage of that it would be insane um, I, I think that's where it started for me and then also because I realized I could probably beat the, the index tracker fund that I put my money in as well and, and so far I can and uh, you know hopefully that will continue. Um, that's, I mean that's, that's, a, that's an accomplishment that's the thing you know a lot of traders get in and you know they they you know they think this is easy but again you look at these like hedge fund managers you look at you know guys like Warren Buffett they're struggling to beat these benchmark returns mm -hmm. you know and these hedge funds this well you know Warren Buffett he had, they have all the capital, they have all the resources, they have the inside connections, they have the experience, you know, for, you know, most guys go, okay, well, I can do better than these guys. You know, why? You know, that's, that's, it's, 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 it's hubris. Yeah. The, I think Warren Buffett, he did, um, it, it was like a bet with some hedge fund dude and it was the S and P to beat um, you know the best of the best hedge funds over ten years, and and I can't remember which year, but the guy actually threw in the towel because the hedge funds did outperform when the markets fell because they could take advantage of shorting, and you know they were more nimble. But in the long run, they they just failed to beat the S and P five hundred, and and you know these are smart people with a lot of money, big teams working for them. It's just difficult, and it's even harder now for, for Warren Buffett because he's so big, he almost is the index. I mean, there's not actually many companies he can buy that will actually move the needle at all, so it's sort of... Yeah. No, it's a challenge, and again, that's yeah. a big point I, 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 I want to make with traders is don't try and be Warren Buffett. You know, like the edge, those are, like you said, their, their problem is they're too big, that hmm. a lot of strategies aren't available to them. You know, they can't scale in a lot of these strategies you know, we're are the edge of us traders, us, you know, we're the small fish. We can take advantage of these, you know, smaller trades that Warren Buffett and these big hedge funds want to leave. So, yeah, don't get in the game going, OK, I'm going to, you know, run a hedge fund. And I'm going to predict which way the market goes and that. No, look, look for, you know, and I will talk about I'm sure we're talking about more, but look for glitches. Look for these small yeah. inefficiencies in the markets. Look for these little trades. You're not. I'm, I'm not worried. We're not traders. Not Warren Buffett. I'm not a hedge fund manager. I'm not like you know. I'm a, sca a little scavenger trying to take the little yeah. scraps that Warren, <laughs> Warren Buffett uh, leaves behind. But I think most traders want to be. You know, they they picture. Oh, you're a trader. You're you know. You're Warren Buffett. You're this. And I'm sure you get the same thing when so you know someone hears you're a trader. Like it's, it's always well, you know, Wall Street for me. Yeah. What well, you know? What like stocks do you like? You know. What can be. You know. I, where's Apple going to be in ten years? You know, I have, I have no, I have no idea. I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not wearing a suit to work. I'm sitting in my, you know, my flip flops and a t-shirt in front of the screen, you know, trying to, you know, trying to pick up these, these scraps that are too small for, for Warren Buffett and the rest of these hedge funds. So, yeah, and I think that's part of the reason, you know, to, and that's, that's another thing why trading is tough, it, and it ultimately is pretty. I think the good traders is pretty unglamorous. It's yeah, not, well, you know, we're not running hedge really, funds and definitely. looking at, you know, going through balance sheets and predicting the next great, you know, stock. We're, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're just picking little spots, which, you know, finding where the edge is. It's, you know, I, I have no idea. I, when I, uh, my trading involves nothing to do. I don't care what the, you know, when I trade a stock, I have no idea what the, what, by now I know what it does. I, I know what the company is, but I don't care what they do or what their earnings are or any, anything like that. You know, I'm just looking to pick up scraps. And mm. it's, it is fairly, un, you know, it's fairly unglamorous. I think most traders want to get into the game going, oh, I'm going to be, you know, this, 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 this hedge fund <laughs> Big guy yeah. picking <laughs> stocks and predicting which way the market's going. And, Oh, what's the Fed doing? And 
you know, how did Apple do on their latest, you know, what's their revenues like? That's that's not our job. If you want to do that, you know, get a job at a hedge fund or, you know, do something like that. But that's not where that's not where the edge for us guys. Are. Yeah. But you you have found several glitches throughout your career. Um, one of them, which was quite funny from YouTube, of all places, from some random guy on YouTube. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's something that, like we're saying, it's, you know, it's scavenging. It's just trying to pick up little nuggets, little information, and it's out there. You know, I, I, you know, glitches, and you know, I'm saying scavenging. I'm saying, you know, the basically what I'm trying to do, and what I've seen. You know, I've been in the business long enough, and I've been around lots of good traders. I've traded lots of well, multiple good top prop firms. And my brother's a professional trader. Multiple friends. And like I said, it's not we're not predicting the markets. We're we're trading what I what I call glitches in the book. I you know, and I, I say glitch is a it's a malfunction, it's an inefficiency, it's some type of repeating pattern. It's an arbitrage is a great example. Arbitrage is like you know the biggest you know the biggest glitch out there. And yeah, and I'm trying to you know I, we I, I am and I think most traders we're we're it's a constant fight to find these strategies with edge. And uh, yeah, like you're, like you're saying, again, sometimes it, it, it means turning to <laughs> YouTube or, you know, that's not necessarily, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want, I don't want anyone thinking that, okay, it's as easy as just going on YouTube and, you know, guys yeah, are sad, Sadly, it's never that easy. Yeah. No, no. You know, you know, going on YouTube, going on Twitter, it's a, it's a zoo out there, but you can find, you know, the, this, this story where I, you know, when I was basically dead broke, Trading career was over. I didn't, you know, I had nowhere to turn. So literally just typed in crypto arbitrage strategy on YouTube and, you know, stumbled upon a strategy that saved my trading career and basically <laughs> saved me from destitution. So it is available. That is one avenue. Um, you know, the easier way is to surround yourself with good traders and share ideas and and do it that way. Of course, you can come up with them yourself, but there is opportunity on Mm. Even Twitter, you know, again, there's, as you know, you, it's, a, it's a zoo out there and there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of bad actors and there's a lot of bullshit and there's a lot of crap out there, but you can find some good nuggets. And, you know, guys like yourself are do, putting out good educational stuff, putting out good stuff. So there is, there is stuff out there. And yeah, I was, uh, you know, I stumbled upon an amazing art, ICO, you know, a crypto ICO arbitrage opportunity on, um, on YouTube. You know, the guy was a search for days trying to find, you know, something that I could that I could scavenge on that I could feed on. And it was some guy, you know, in his garage with a couple dozen views who was handing out secrets to an amazing arbitrage strategy. Um, mostly out of naive. And I guess he was a little naive because, you know, yeah, the guys typically guys don't hand out these type of strategies. But, you know. I found it. I knew what I was looking for. You know, again, that's a big thing. You know, I, I knew what a mm. good arbitrage strategy looks like. Um, but I found it and it, you know, it, it saved my ass. So there are, you know, ways to find golden strategies. And I could, you know, these glitch strategies out there, um, you know, on, on things like YouTube. So that's, mm. you know, there's, there's hope. There's <laughs> hope out there. Yeah. What, what was it exactly? The glitch? In crypto, what what the, is something to do with twenty three hours? You know, it's, it's it's fairly complicated. Maybe I'll give you a link and maybe you can put it on the, the footnotes to this yeah. actual this actual to this actual video. But it was um, ICOs are you know are similar to IPOs in stocks. We have IPO, which is an initial initial public public offering, and this was an ICO, an initial coin offering. So you know this was in the high the height of you know the the crypto the first crypto bubble and. You know, it was going wild and ICO was going crazy. You know, the, the, every alt coin was going crazy. And it was a EOS. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this coin. Fairly big coin. And it was, uh, they're doing an ICO. It's a lot different than the stocks IPO, a stock IPO I was used to. So every they were doing it strangely. Every 23 hours, they would have this offering. And it was kind of an auction. And they had a website where you could kind of tell the price of the auction. And to participate in the auction, you need to give them, you you basically sent them Ethereum. Then they gave you this EOS coin at this auction price. 
and then I get this EOS coin, send it back to an exchange, trade, and this this coin, this is a crazy thing, it was already traded on an exchange, so I know, I knew the price of the coin before the auction, so I could, yeah. you know, I knew if I could buy it on this auction down here, and then flip it on the exchange up here, you know, it was an amazing trade. So it was arbitrage, buy low, sell high. Yeah, buy so you're buying it low from somewhere and selling yeah. it somewhere else higher, yeah. And, you know, it was, it was a little different than I was used to. You know, it was a lot of, you send coins here, you do this. And with crypto, you know, one, you know, one slip of a digit in your, you know, your, your oh, yeah. <laughs> Um But it, you know, it worked like a charm. And I, you know, there was, there was, there was a, obviously edge there. And I, you know, when I found this video, I could, it, the auction had been happening, so I could back test it. So I went back and back, back tested it and turned out it was, you know, there's an ama amazing amount of edge there. So, <laughs> You know, Just and lying it's, around waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, again, like I, you know, I have a, you know, that was that was a needle in the haystack. Honestly, I have, you know, I haven't found too much else uh, as far as far as strategies on 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 YouTube since. Yeah. But I'm not saying YouTube can't be, you know, a good educational resource. Like, you know, there's there's lots of guys, you know, there's good trader interviews, there's good education, there's you know, but you know, don't count on it as your long source for trading strategies yeah I mean that that arbitrage sounds like one that I, that I actually did a YouTube video on as well and uh, okay. it was one that I sent you where yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I remember it was at the, the start of the year and someone had put like uh they'd obviously left an order in forgotten about it and there was bad news and they were buying really high but probably hadn't either seen the news I told the broker so I just, I just posted about it on Twitter um, because I, I thought it was quite funny, you know, and, and assumed the order would be removed. The order wasn't removed. And then I thought, well, I've, I've told everyone about this trade, so I'm probably not going to be able to get it on. Yeah. And then nobody actually mouth. took the trade. I was the one who took it. <laughs> I think I made £192 in like a second, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, which isn't getting you a Lambo tomorrow. But, you know, for one second's work, it was, uh, you know, not going to complain. Um, yeah, I saw that. I saw that video, and when I saw that, I was like, "That's a glitch." You know, yeah. that is the definition of a glitch. So yeah, that was a, that was a great great example. And you know, there there are plenty of examples out there. Even on my in my Twitter, I posted a few examples. Um, you know, arbitrage, crypto arbitrage. You know, there was, there, and it seems that even now, crypto is the market where you know these glitches are you know still. My, let's too say, crazy let's for say, me crypto. more prevalent than at least equity markets and uh you know i, I don't see it for unfortunately especially right now i don't see too many uh glitches out there but the the, the crypto traders i talk to it seems like there's still um still glitches out there so you know that's i guess that's my stubbornness or all of our stubbornness we should be you know trading trading crypto if there's opportunity out there and you know ultimately that's what a good trader does you know you you know i'm not you know, I'm not a, I guess I, I trade equities basically full time, but you know, I'm a trader at heart. So I should go where, you know, where the edge is or, you know, where the glitches are. And it does, yeah. you know, from what I hear, it seems like there's still, there's still some in this, uh, in the crypto world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and mean, I haven't found that many glitches in the UK market. I and mean, that, that auction strategy was a lot bigger before I started trading and then, you know, everyone sort of discovered it. Um, you could also, buy stocks before they were going next dividend and put guaranteed stops on them and then of course the brokers found out that strategy so that doesn't work anymore which is sort of understandable um you could also go long um buy your techs going into phase three with like quite tight stops at one point as well so you know you could actually whereas your risk might be like 50 percent plus on the trade you could actually get a guaranteed stop for like 25 percent um, which made the trade a lot more, um, you know, because the broker is effectively guaranteeing it. Um, but yeah, in in terms of, of stubbornness, um, you did have a trade which was in a casino, LVS, and it, it fell from, what, $140 or something all the way to, yeah. to one? <laughs> one? One dollar, yeah, this was back in uh, 2008. And yeah, that was that was what I, I write about it in the book. That's yeah, I guess the fish, you know, the the fish that got away, the big well, really big fish mm. that got away. Um, 
And, you know, there's a lot of lesson you know, in that story. Again, there's, I guess there's a lot of morals to that story. Again, stubbornness um, is one is is one thing. You know, I covered, I bought it one. You know, this stock went to, from one fifty to one, and I think I covered. I, you know, I was buying on the way down, but I did bid, buy a big chunk of one and yeah. covered. I think of five. You know, just you know, just stubbornness i'm not you know i'm a scout i'm a scalper at heart so it's tough it was tough to you know it was tough oh, and that's to, a 400 percent return from one dollar yeah it is pretty good but it's <laughs> not bad but you know my brother and my buddy mike they they held it to about 50 bucks with a lot more size than me so yeah you know that's you know that that that's 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 a monster trade and those are you know those those monster trades are out there and another a big thing about this one this was back in 2008 when volatility was just wild i mean again i think we i think we got over 80 on the you know during the the great financial crisis and it you know created what we you know we call capitulation where just you know people would just dump in whatever not necessarily because they're you know overpriced or you know there there's a reason behind it just because it's panic blood on the streets you had stocks again lvs was yeah, you know, right. But I've been, I went, to, I've been to their casinos. Yes, but I've wasted a lot of money in their casinos in <laughs> in Vegas. And then I took a trip to Macau in China, and I was just, I was shocked. You know, the amount of money people were throwing around there. I've never seen anything like it. You know, it's just it puts it puts Vegas to shame. So I knew this was a good business. And again, even during a you know financial downturn, there's there's got to be advantages in you know owning casinos. You know, and especially knowing how much edge there. So. Um, you know that those 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 periods of volatility are what really traders should be feasting on. Um, you know, not only were there glitches everywhere in two thousand and eight, there was you know these cases of capitulation. The market was broken. You know, there was there was there was there was there was almost too much. And looking back, you know, I, I did okay. I was a little, I was stubborn not only in you know some of these trades, but. I was stubborn in uh, a, a, a couple other things. I, you know, was I, I ended up I was trading remotely by myself from uh, from London while I should have been trading back in my home office in Texas in a you know in a professional environment. Um, I write in the book again. I I, I got a little sidetracked with a uh, you know a, a relationship. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. I, 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 you know, a couple. You know, that was it. And there's another moral to that story is, you know, when it when you get these periods like 2008, you gotta hit it. You gotta hit it yeah. big because, you know, who knows when you'll get the next big bout of volatility. And after 2008, it was really until 2020 till we had really sustained just amazing trading. So, you know, it was quite a quite a you know a, a drought. Let's say uh, mm. I wish you know looking back. You know, if I if I had known I've been waiting that longer, of course I would have, would have ta hopefully taken more advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, twenty twenty, you actually couldn't leave your house, so there weren't really that many distractions. Yeah, just, I mean, I, I was uh, getting up, going in my gym, um, going to my room, and then just pretty much sitting there for like twelve to fourteen hours, um, then watching Netflix for an hour and going to bed, and then same again. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 That, thankfully, there was no distractions because that was it was just insane, wasn't it? It was it was it was wild. I I I, I write again. I, I although I even made a mistake then. I think there was you know when when COVID hit, there was a small window. I you know I was in Poland uh, here mm. in Poland trading remotely, and of course you know it's easy to look back in hindsight, but I should have gotten the first flight to Texas to trade in this office around all these you know, professional traders, you know, with this fast internet, with the proper, you know, with all the, all the right conditions, uh, you know, I didn't, of course, you know, it's easy, you know, back then it was crazy, yeah, yeah. Dr. World, we thought the, thought the world might end, you know, jumping on a plane during the beginning of a pandemic, you know, especially when I, you know, I've been, you know, I have some, ch I have, uh, have children here, um, you know, I was a little scared I wouldn't see him again, but as a trader, yeah. you, you know, the environment means so much, looking back, if I'd made that trip, you know, I'm sure my P&L would have been, you know, multiple of what it was. Yeah, but I guess when you got family, it's it sort of changes it, and you, yeah, you've no, got to was, take care of yeah. other things as well. Exactly. You know, you know how it was when 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 that COVID, when COVID hit. It's, you know, we had no idea what. 
yeah what, what was going on so yeah jumping jumping on a transatlantic flight wasn't necessarily would have been <laughs> yeah. the smarter thing to do. but but what, what's interesting about covid though is i remember talking about it at a lunch in december 2019 and it being in china and i got a friend who met a hedge fund guy and he said he was like all in short on the market because covid was gonna be an absolute train wreck for the economy and you know he was right but i i don't know if he got stopped out or not because in january the markets just did not care about covid and even in february you know th this thing was in italy and we had you know all the videos on twitter of people saying take it seriously and yet the markets just went higher and i, I remember thinking like this it's probably a good risk reward trade to like go heavy short because nothing's priced in but you know i just thought if nobody else cares then why would i be right and a bit of a shame really um because when everything did fall I was then worried about getting heavy shocks. I didn't want to like the market to like snap back. Um, so it was only when things were like really in free fall did I like just hit anything and everything. And I, I should have done a lot better, but you know, hindsight again. But you know, talking about monster trades, LVS, I think that was a monster trade in plain sight that I just didn't take. And, and a lot of other people didn't take as well, because if they had, the markets would have priced it in um but yeah they, i remember that time quite quite vividly yeah the problem is i mean again and i can even look back to you know it is when it's easy to look back on a chart go oh lbs so you know this huge great casino of one dollar so you know but you know it was it was crazy back then you know again we you know the the world financial system was on the brink of collapse mm. and you know you weren't people weren't thinking straight and again i know i had started buying lbs i think you know 15, then I was buying more 10, I was born at five. And I was, you know, I was just kind of like, I, I was almost, instead of buying a one, I was like, I just can't, you know, even if it was a one, it still could have gone, you know, technically gone. Zero, yeah. Yeah, so again, I, I was almost just like, just get me out, you know, the pain is too much. You know, so it is, it's, 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 hard, of, it's hard to think rational when stuff like that is going on. You know, same with, same with COVID. You know, it was, you can look at the chart and go, oh, wow, I should, you know, I should have been buying here. I should have been doing this. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, I, I remember, like, with what you're saying, again, I remember that, too. It was, you know, the market, the, you know, 2008, up to, 2009, up to 2020, the market just raced up. Nothing stopped it. I mean, I think right before COVID, it was Iran and America were, you know, on the verge of war. The market didn't care. Mm -hmm. And then... I agree, you know, people started talking about COVID. I think it, you're right. It was at the beginning of the end of 2019. The market didn't care. It was still raging up. So I, you know, I don't know how your friend did, but the chances are he got wiped out, you know, and he was, he was right. You know, yeah. and that's, I was the same way. I was like, this is crazy. And I always, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bottom, bottom picker, top picker, you know, I'm a contrarian. So I was like, oh, I could short this, short this. And I just got stopped out every time, you know, and, and ultimately that's, that's why I shouldn't be doing that because I, I was right. And I've been a right a lot of times, you know, I've, I love to short these, you know, these high, these high short percentage pump and pump stocks, you know, these yeah. EME type stuff, these, you know, and there's a whole list in 2020, 2000 or 2021, you know, that I, I, I kept shorting them. I kept shorting them. I kept shorting them. I kept shorting them. I kept getting blown out, whether it was right. Tesla whether it was, um, you know, I, I, I try to stay away from GME, but there was anything. I mean, it was, you know, all these just sketchy retail stocks and I got wiped out every, every trade I made. But of course they all came down, you know, I, you know, they were all, I was, I was right. And you know, he gave me a prize and you know, I could know what way to go, but I got, you know, I lost. So I think the lesson is, you know, the, and for me, it's like, stay away from that. Stop predict, predicting what the market is. Cause even if, when I'm right, I still lose. That's not my mm. job. Stick to, you know, stick to finding the glitches, stick to, you know, picking the scraps up. And if, you know, if COVID does hit and we do get some amazing volatility, that's going to be good for my trade. And I'll take advantage of that volatility in other ways and, you know, and make plenty of money. But, uh, you know, that's what I've learned in 23 years is, especially with me predicting the market or, you know, trying to make sense of it, I, 
I get burned time after time, even when I'm right. You know, I'm never, <laughs> never, and I'm, yeah. you know. It, never it's pretty right. hard to like predict anything. I mean, now we can look back on it and say, oh, well, you know, it was, because I remember William Hill, a, a, a gambler, gambling company here, it was down at like 90%, more than 90%. And I remember being on the bid at 30 and, and you know, putting some on the ask at like 33 the spread was like 10 percent on this huge company um you know and I, I was all out by 60 and i thought that was a great trade and it ended up getting taken over at like was it like 400 or three three six, something like crazy it was like a 10 bagger in like just over a year or something crazy um yeah. and and you know it's easy to say now everyone's stuck in the house they can't bet on anything because the football's not on or whatever. Every, all the sports things have been cancelled. But gamblers will find something to gamble on. You know, if it's not, they will bet on literally anything because they just want to gamble. That that's who they are. Yeah. Um, and people are bored at home. You know, you could you could say should have known that, but it just didn't really occur to me. And I'm just not smart enough to to make that sort of prediction. Um, well. But well, like you said, I think if you right. if you if you did do it, you you know you get out too early anyway, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's no, the, I think, you know, it's almost like the pain of the game. You know, if you're up a huge amount, and you know that that is a significant P and L, that will you know extend your runway as a trader. Uh, you know, it just makes sense to to take some off the table or take take it all out um yeah. because a lot of these things they don't they don't run forever you know it's it's the rare one that keeps you thinking that maybe i should hold this trade uh you know for a long long time and just try and ride the trend but then if you're looking to hold a, a multi-year trend you're going to see drawdowns of like 20 to 40 yeah. percent on a stock easily um, no, this, that, that that move that move after that covid low was sick. I mean, again, mm. to hold those moves, and again, you know, we're talking about 2008, some of the moves, you know, LVS going, that was nothing compared to, you know, some of these, you know, basically every single stock, they just went, they went wild, you know, but what, it, you know, you buy a stock at 10 bucks, and then a month, you know, a month later, it's at 20 or 30. I mean, you better, you know, you, you better have balls of steel to, you know, keep holding that. And I think, you know, yeah. to, you know, to be, you know, and it, they did, they just kept going for a year or two. And I think to hold those moves, you had to, you know, like I said, you, I think more just oblivious, you know, just not being able to watch your P&L, not to being able to watch your trades because there's no way you could expect, you know, expect those, expect those type of yeah. returns. And again, it's not like COVID, it's not like COVID went away. COVID was, you know, it was, it was still out there. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it did destroy the economy. It just took a bit of time after all the sort yeah. of pent up demand. Um, so even then, you know, if, if you'd have took the view in December 2020 and thought, OK, we've had this big bounce from like March, April, COVID hasn't gone away. We've got a lot of people who aren't getting the vaccine because obviously the vaccine news dropped into the market on the 9th of November. Uh, you know, we had a lot of countries um, in Asia and other places producing things that just weren't getting produced because people were dying or people were sick. So, but even then, the the market didn't really start to go down until like December twenty twenty one. So you could have been wrong for like a full year, <laughs> and and just lost money, even though you were right eventually. Yeah, well, that's you know that again during the COVID, and during two thousand eight. Yes, there was this LBS trade, but nearly all the money I made and all the money I saw everyone else made wasn't because you know they were trying to short the market or buy the bounces or you know predict what was going on they were just using this insane volatility to take advantage of these glitches and you know when you have this kind of volatility it shakes things up and there's so many opportunities i mean during covid i made most of my money by you know just trading like gold i would you know i'd have a gold chart up and i'd have a bunch of gold stocks ready to go Gold would spike up and bang, bang, bang. I quickly buy these gold stocks and then scalp out. I mean, this is simple, simple, yeah. easy stuff. I wasn't, you know, it was no predicting. It was, you know, it's more of a video game than anything. Hmm. And, you know, these these auctions come alive. And there's just, there's just so much, there's so much more edge out there. You know, the, 
the algos get turned off. And it's, it's, you know, it's right pickings. But yes, you can make money by, you know, being a momentum trader, by trying to pick bottoms. But, you know, one bad, you know, one misstep and, you know, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a bunch of trouble. I think the easier way is to look at the market and go, okay, what's the best way to take advantage of the volatility? Volatility is always the trader's best friend. So instead of me trying to pick, like, well, like we mentioned, we talked about earlier, we're, we're not Warren Buffett, we're not hedge fund managers. Yes, if you can buy a bargain, LVS at $1, you know, that's probably not a bad idea. But, you know, that can also kind of, you know, screw your head. The best way to find a way is to take advantage of the volatility. Mm. You know, find a way, find, find strategies that are loaded with edge and hit them as big as you can, fairly, you know, as aggressively as you can, you know, with, 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 a, with a fashion, efficient execution and take advantage of it because who knows how long this volatility is going to last. And then when it goes away, how long you're going to have to wait till this next, you know, next burst of volatility, you know, now, yeah. as you know, we, you know, 2020, 2021, we're good, 2022. And now that bubble, you know, that VIX is back down, volatility is back down. And, you know, it's back to, back to scraping by, it's struggling. I'm not saying there's not edge out there and there's not traders mm. making money, but I think most traders generally- it's definitely not as easy. Yeah, that's yeah. certain. Yeah, because I mean, even in 2022, you, you could short a lot of the things where there was still a lot of heat in the market and people hadn't really priced in the downside but now the sort of risk of going short is that you know people are looking six to nine months ahead they've already been smacked down completely they're already on single digit PEs um, you know they've already fallen like 50 to 90 percent it's just a risk that someone might come in and, and take it over and, and there's also not enough downside you know a lot of these companies probably won't go bust so straight away, your upside isn't even 100%. It might actually be a lot lower, and the risk could be, you know, minus 200% in the hole, if, if, especially if there's a short squeeze. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's not the same market at all. Um, but, but you actually started your own prop firm, which I think is, uh, you know, both insane, but, but also qu quite admirable because uh, well, okay. I have no idea. It's insane, really can, you know, considering <laughs> the, you know, the conditions. Um, yeah. But what were the uh, sort of learning points from that? And would, would you do it again? You know what? I still think I, I still think it's a great business model again. And, mm -hmm. you know, now it's, it's different because when, when we talk prop firms and again, I know now you go on Twitter, everything and YouTube is it's about prop firms, you know, prop firms, you get funded and this and that. Um, it's a Love little different. When, I say prop, on, yeah, when I we talk prop firms, a prop firm to me, and this is what, where I've traded, this is where I got my start. And this is where I spent, I've been in this world for my whole trading career. A prop firm is when you work basically with a group of traders, you know, again, in our office, I know you can, I, right now I tra trade remotely from a prop, but for new traders, again, I think it's, it's, it's a necessity to trade in an office with other traders. So again, I, you know, I, for me, a prop firm is an office full of traders and there's instruction, there's, you know, some coaching going on, there's some teamwork going on. Not, you know, now it seems like it's, you know, just a way to get, I don't know, funded. Um, so that was that's something I'd say. Be cautious, you know. Prop firm is is the way I think to get your trade, you know, start your trading career or even you know finish your trading career. But the whole benefit of a prop firm is to surround yourself with other traders and work as a team, and you know, and and get the benefits of that. And this is a type of prop firm I you know I wanted to start. So I you know I knew the business model for a prop firm. Again, you know you. You have traders, you train them, and you split the profits and, you know, the, and take some slice of, the, let's say, the commission and fees and so on. Um, and, you know, when I started this prop firm, I believe it was, it was about 10 years ago. So we weren't far removed of 2008, 2009. So I knew, you know, and I've seen the crazy amount of money being made those years, not necessarily by the good traders, just by, you know, guys who weren't even that good. There was so much edge and there's so much volatility. Um, you know, we're talking millions, tens of millions. So I knew 
you know, all you needed is, you know, one or two of those traders, not, you know, one trader to be making that money, take a slice of that, and that pays for all the, the other failed traders. And I know there'd be failed traders. So, you know, the business model is, you know, a big chunk of your traders fail, but that's all dependent on your coaching and your training. And then my idea was, you know, I, I was, I love training. I love coaching. I, I, you know, I was confident I could give a good education. So I you know, even though I was struggling with my own trading, I really, you know, I, I talk about it in the book. I didn't have basically any money to fund this group. It was, you know, it was really a stupid business plan, but I, you know, I wanted to do it. I thought we were mm -hmm. on the verge of having, you know, another huge volatility spike. And, you know, not only was I going to make a bunch of money, but I can make a bunch of money off this office, off this prop firm. And it was, you know, it was going to get me back into coaching. There was, there's a lot of positives, but the problem was I was doing everything by, so I had a, you know, we started, I think with five or six traders. And so I was recruiting, training, you know, accounting, marketing, doing everything. <laughs> and Sounds at the tight. same time, trading myself. And I didn't have, you know, this, it sounds crazy, but this prop firm basically didn't have, you know, there was a small amount of money set aside, but apart from that, it wasn't more. I wasn't getting any salary, there wasn't anything. So I had to support myself and my family at the same time as running this prop firm. And the market was tough, my trading wasn't great. And I was trying to, you know, make money trading while I was training other, these other guys. And the market just got tougher. Um, and of course, it was a, you know, a recipe for disaster. You know, I, I met some, you know, met some good guys. We had a good office. Some of the guys ended up being amazing traders at, you know, top firms. So it wasn't a total lost cause. But, um, you know, of course, I should I didn't have the capitalization. I didn't have the I get help. Um, but, you know, it was a, ultimately, you know, I, I and this is this, this is where the end of this prop firm coincides with me dead broke, you know, living with my dad in Poland. Yeah. So it was, you know, it did end, it, it, of course it ended badly, but you know, it's not something I would, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do again. Although, you know, the market, the market's gotten a lot tougher. Um, and yeah, I, I still, you know, I still do have some scars from that experience, but mm -hmm. it's a good model. It's a good model. It's a good model yeah. for the owner of the prop firm and the 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 employees or the the traders in the prop firm if there's a good education if you know there's a good setup and of course if the trading you know ultimately if the trading conditions are uh, are good and that's you know that's unfortunately out of my out of my control was out of our control yeah yeah i, th I think you you rank kirshner right which yeah, that's where um, I st that's where i started my career yeah is it is either owned i don't know if it's owned by or affiliated with smb capital mm -hmm. with uh mike bellafury and and um, yeah, the the author of the books. Um, but yeah, I, I actually applied to become a trader um, at lots of different places, but because I don't have any sort of quant skills, it was uh, no use. Um, and, you know, I'm just a point and click dinosaur, I guess, discretionary yeah. dinosaur. <laughs> well, that's a problem now, especially now there's not too many. I mean, yeah, Kirk, I, you know, I still know traders, good friends at Kirshner, there's SMB. There's a couple other firms, and there's a couple of future firms, but there are not many around these days. And I don't think there's any like, in the UK. Though. You know, like I, I was, you know, when I got my start at Kirshner, I, you know, I, I have fortunately had a, I, I had this, the securities license, so they kind of got my foot in the door, and their recruiting was nothing like it is now. I know, like you said, I mean, just get a job at, you know, one of these prop firms or even a higher tier prop firm. I mean, you better, you know, you better have an Ivy League education. You better be you know, rock. And now it's all about, you know, as you know, it's about math, you know, you better, you know, have a, you know, masters in math, you better be a rocket scientist, you better know, you know, 10 programming languages. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's tough to get in one of these firms. But if you can, I suggest any trader at least try. If you can't, you know, try, you know, you got to try and find someone to help you try and find a mentor, try and find an office where, you know, just a co-op a cooperative of guys who trade together but you know don't don't do it don't do it on yourself D don't do it by yourself yeah um you know the odds are as tough enough as it is that's 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 not the way to approach things yeah i mean i, I was quite lucky because i found quite a few people on twitter and 
you know quickly realized who to listen to and who not to and i mean you can just do it you follow a bunch of people you see if over time are they actually talking rubbish or you know are they saying that they're buying the same stock 50 times in a row and yet the chart is just going boo <laughs> you know they're obviously emotional and, and sometimes they can be great fades so if you find someone like that you know that you can you can fade them um i remember uh tom tom dante actually told the story of a guy he knew um, who literally signed up to a subscription service because he heard a load of complaints that the guy consistently lost money. So he signed up and got a discount for paying like for the full year in advance. And then whenever this guy took a trade, he literally took the opposite side of the trade. I mean, that is, you know, it's so simple. But yeah, if you know, especially in FX where it's, hugely liquid you know you can't do it with stocks the same way but fx you you could literally just fade someone in in a pair because the liquidity is there and and this guy probably cleaned up it's it's not much different to like the b book model of brokers um yeah so so there is edge everywhere even in yeah losing trades. I think you make, you're making a good point you have to be imaginative you know hmm. yes you know ideally it's best to get your trading education in a prop firm if you can't do that there are even like I, we talked about earlier on YouTube, there's, you know, there, you, you can find some good stuff. And on Twitter, you know, you don't want to just blindly start following, you know, the first guy you see in the trades because he says, you know, he's posting screenshots of, you know, his P&L. But yeah, maybe you figure out, OK, this guy's, you know, he's full of shit. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to I'm going to fade his trades. Um, but yeah, there, there are, you know, there are ways. The thing is, you can't, you know, like we, we started off. You gotta realize how tough it is, and you gotta, you know, you gotta bust your ass. Whether it's scrolling through Twitter and filtering out the bullshit, or you know, on YouTube, there are resources out there. You just have to, you know, you have to use your brain, and you have to filter out, and you have to find ways to use this information for yourself. Don't, you know, it's not as it's never as easy as, oh wow, this, you know, this this guy on, uh, you know, on on Twitter. He's, you know, he's posting screenshots. He's making ten million every year. He's got a picture of him and his, you know, his Lambo. And for twenty dollars, I can sign up, and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna tell me his trades, and I'm gonna be a millionaire. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> people fall, fall, fall for that. You know, yeah. But, some of, some you of know, these guys are quite believable. I mean, one of them even made it on the Channel Four, which is, yeah. uh, you know, quite quite big in the UK. Um, but I remember it, it went out on Facebook. And all of the comments were, this guy scammed me. And, and I think within two days, the entire thing had been pulled. But I mean, Channel 4 obviously did zero due diligence because this, this guy was just a fraud. Yeah, well, again, and that's a, sad, that's a sad thing about trading. It is, it's like, it, it, you know, there, there's so many sharks out there. And, you know, people are, they're, you know, they, they hear these stories of, you know, these people selling these stories of, get rich in a couple of days or a couple of months. It's, it's, it's not like that. Like I said, it's mostly, you know, these stories like I'm telling them, me dead broke, the yeah. anguish, the pain. As you, as you know, I don't think traders, non-traders realize what it's like to spend their day doing their, their job and then lose their own money, you know, come out yeah. for, for it, <laughs> you know. It's not only, you know, and it's not the, the hit to your bank account. Of course, that hurts. It's the, you know, it's the psychological aspects. It's, oh, shit, you know, am I, have I lost it? You know, my strategy's gone. Am I ever going to make money again? What am I going to do? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's brutal. And, you know, these, the, 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 these people are kind of suckered into getting into this, this industry. And a lot of times it ends, it does end badly. Again, I told my story, mm -hmm. me. And I've, been, I've had plenty of dark times, but there's been darker times. I mean, in the book, I talk about a good friend of mine who he really got addicted to this rush and he got, you know, he got, he, and he ended up, you know, he ended up killing himself. It's a, you know, it's a tragic story and trading, yeah, no, it's horrible. you know, if it wasn't for trading, he'd still be alive. There was, there was other things to do with it. But again, I want, I want people to realize this is serious stuff, you know? And again, if you, if you, you know, a lot of people, it's not that tough to kind of get, you know, trading to get hold of you and it can turn it can turn dark you know really quickly so um you know be cautious if this you know jumping in you know even put dipping your toe into this game yeah 
Yeah. You know, that's and again, that's what you know, that's a big thing about this book. I wanted I wanted to tell that. I wanted to be honest. You don't see you don't see too much too much stuff out there about this just this brutal dark side of trading. Yeah, no, it's it's a really good book. Um I think you've done a really good job because yeah, it, it does give you that view of, of what it's like being a trader. And, you know, you talked about the Facebook IPO and, and you know, the baseball trading cards where you found out an edge with being able to, to work out which players were on the run and therefore their value would increase. So you trade them now. And, you know, I guess a bit like going stocks before earnings in a sense. Yeah. No. Um, and, and other strategies like that. But, yeah, it's it's sort of tough to explain that you could actually work 40, 60 hours a week for an entire month and yet not only not make anything uh, but actually lose it and, and pay for the privilege of, of doing that work for nothing. Um, it's, it's quite difficult to get your head around that, you know, someone in, yeah. in McDonald's, which actually is a very hard job because I've done it, um, but, you know, a very easily obtainable job could be making more than you for for something which requires a lot more brain power yeah no it's 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 yes you can make a lot of money trading it can you know there are but i don't want to go you know, all doom and gloom i mean i've you know i have there's been plenty of good times i mean i was 25 yeah. years old you know with more money than i ever dreamed of you know dream house dream car um you know even now you know after you know i've had a good run and I have freedom, I have independence, you know, I have most of my material needs met. I don't yeah. have to worry about answering to a boss. I don't have to, you know, I work when I want, you know, I do, I do. That's, that's a life, that's that's what I love about being a trader. But, you know, I've, yeah, same. I've paid my dues. And again, I'm the, you know, I'm, I've been at it for 23 years, you know, I, there's not many people who survive in this game that long, <laughs> not many at all. So, you know, I'm one of the, you know, one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very lucky ones. But you, you were profitable, I think, in your first year, right? I was. I, you know, I will, I will say it was a lot easier back then. You know, the markets were a lot. You know, let's say were more in a fit, were more more inefficient, more inefficient. And there was a, you know, there was a lot more edge out there, and these glitches were good. Um, but that's, you know, I started my career, I started down 40,000. I, I, you know, I wasn't listening when I went in there. I was, you know, this, this is before kind of Kirshner had a, you know, the, 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 the solid training program it has now. And, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I love the rush. I just bang, 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 hitting trades, just gambling. You know, if you don't have a, if you don't have a strategy with edge and you're not executing, you're gambling. And I was gambling. Um, so I got to dug myself a big hole. And then all of a sudden, right before I obviously was going to be, you know, thrown in the streets, I learned to cut my losers. I turned to scalp in and I started, you know, trading these glitch strategies. And within a few months, I, you know, turned it all around and I, you know, I had a, almost 100K month within my first year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th that's yeah, it's great. I, was, I felt like I was on top of the world. <laughs> but, you know, that's not the norm. You know, making money your first year is that's, especially these days, that's, that's doing especially really well. in this market yeah <laughs> yeah no if a trader makes it you know if a trader started the last six months and is making money on this first year i still think it's probably more to do with luck than anything you know and that's most of the profits by traders are right off the bat are are luck because you're mm. you're clueless but uh yeah I, I did have success at the beginning um but the you know the market the market was easier and again it doesn't mean it no means so oh, man it was an easy ride from then and then it's been you know non-stop roller coaster career by then but you know i had to also put in i busted my ass this first year too and i found out what the guys in the, there wasn't too many back then too many guys in his office making cash and i was like what are they doing i'm gonna do what they're doing and then you know that's when it flipped again i'm for you know i was fortunate enough to be in an office with some guys making money where i could let's say steal their strategies. You know, a lot of, mm. a lot of, or let's say most traders aren't necessarily in that same situation. So they, they have to do it the harder way. So I was, I was, I was, I was fortunate. And that's the easy way to do it is to surround yourself by successful traders and steal or share ideas. And that's the only yeah. reason, you know, that's really the only reason I'm here. If I hadn't started at Kirshner, or, you know, trade these amazing prop firms, you know, there's, there, there's no doubt in my mind I wouldn't have made it. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, you never know. You might have found something else. 
but it's yeah definitely i guess played a big help and yeah when i first started i was the same i was reading books i was watching youtube videos i was you know just asking questions about things like why is this this and why does that happen and what does that mean and and you, you've sort of got to do that because you know you learn a lot you know I'm like i read read books on like value investing and decided that wasn't really for me um and decided sort of momentum was for me and then it became sort of scalping and you know for intraday trading from auctions and things like that um but but you have to go through that huge learning process and then also write down your trades i mean that that was a big one for me because i remember like one year i just printed off every single trade and and was like horrified how much money i was losing because i was just pressing buttons because i was bored and i'd you know log on to twitter try and and buy something because i was just bored um and when, and when i told the amount that it was costing me, i was like right well i'm not going to do that again because uh you know i could have had had a good year but it could have been even better if i just hadn't like frittered away needless profits um hard won profits just just gone because i was too bored and couldn't keep my fingers off the buttons well it's ad- admirable again and, and you know like i'm saying i had you know in the scheme of things i had it easy i started a good prop firm i didn't necessarily have the greatest training back then but i you know i had other guys you know you've done you know again your story shows that it is it is possible to do it without that you know that mm-hmm. background but again, it also sounds, and I, you know, I know from listening to you and listening to some of your other interviews, you're you have that passion, you have that fire, and you busted your ass, yeah. I mean, again, it's, yeah, yeah, I can't kind of, you imagine know, it's it's else. even yeah. it's even harder to take that from you, but you're you, you know, you're proof that it is possible. But you know, it's mm-hmm. you you you've done you've you, you've taken the hard way, and that, like I said, that is the, that's 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 very admirable. Yeah, well, thanks. But also, the market that I trade is a lot easier than forex you know pe- people ask me why don't you trade forex it's hard <laughs> i'm not smart enough to trade a forex but with uk stocks you know the something under 100 million institutions are not really going to look at that business that much um so really the price is set by you know people people like you and me just just you know normal guys and girls and other people just setting the price with with their ordinary buys and sells and especially the more speculative stocks it's like people who've heard about a stock down the pub don't really know what they're doing um and in a sense you know your edge is to take their money away from them and, and put it in your pocket i mean it, it i guess it sounds a bit mean when you say it like that but everyone out there Trading is trying to take mean. your Trading money brutal, yeah. yeah i mean it's uh you know me and you Obviously, we like each other, but we're not on the same team. And uh, you know, we we if it was both of us against each other on a trade, we'd be looking to take each other's money. I mean, that is just the reality of it. Yeah, well, get, um, that's you know when I when I was when I was recruiting for uh, you know traders, and I still do. When I you know that's a trade I look for in traders. You gotta be you gotta have some ruthlessness hmm. in it. You know, if you're you know even the best traders I know, they seem like all oh, these nice, calm guys and this and that no these guys would rip your head off i mean like they're a comp- i mean you know not nasty mean guys but competitive yeah. you know like you know it's 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 brutal it's hard it's yeah that's that's the thing i mean and, you know even that aspect of our job like i'm saying i'm waiting for volatility so i can make a ton of money what makes volatility well terrorist attacks nuclear wars invasions pandemics you know that's that's another you know there's a lot of dark sides of this yeah this you know, of this profession of ours. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's it is you got to be ruthless. You may and I also want to go back, you made a good point, you know, you're saying, you know, you're you're lucky because you trade uh, UK stocks, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's a great point. I mean, maybe, maybe I should be trading UK stocks, maybe we should all, you know, that's nine, you know, that's a huge part of trading is like, you know, finding the right markets to trade, yeah, yeah, find, no, absolutely, and yeah. find the right strategies. You know, like I was saying earlier, I've been talking to all these crypto traders, and they're having, you know, they're, they're making consistent money. They're doing well. Where you know most equity traders and most futures traders I talk to are struggling. Well, why are you not trade? You know why are you not trading? If you're a trader, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're a trader, you're not. You don't have to just trade that. You good trader goes to where the edge is, goes to where the opportunity is. So you know, you, you know, ask me why why I'm not trading crypto. Good, good question. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, I'm a stubborn bastard, I guess. You know, there, I know <laughs> I there's edge there. I just, you know, again, you also have to take into account 
you know, setting up an account, the leverage, the risk of this account, you know, the, there's, of course there are, you know, there's, there's other things to think about, but you know, if you're trading a market and you think you're a good trader and there's no edge there, well, you know, and you're sure it's not you, then look for another market. There's always, you know, there's always opportunities out there. And that's the way it was, you know, 2018, 2000, 2017, 2000, equity markets were dead, but crypto was just, yeah, I can remember, know, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't make the switch um, at all. I just stayed with UK stocks. Is it stubbornness or? But the way I saw it, I'd spent, you know, by that point a couple of years in the market. It felt like I had a good good understanding of the infrastructure, of of how to actually make money, and then I'd be going into a market where I had no idea. I mean, I did actually try to get money in. And I realized how difficult it was to get money in. And I thought, if it's this hard to get it in, what's it going to be like getting it out? Because um, yeah. I knew... Yeah, you lose all your money. At, you... some, at some point. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, you lose all your edge if you, you know, your broker goes bust or they steal yeah. your money. And you're, yeah, that's a great point. If you, you know, there's no point just going, oh, I'm going to start trading crypto. Well, you got to have a strategy. you got to know mm. the market. You know, if, you know, I talk about this ICO crypto strategy. You know, I... Like I said, I was looking for it. I was looking for strategies. I was looking for edge, and I knew the crypto markets were wild. But you know, I knew I wasn't just going to jump in there. You know, just betting on some alt altcoin. You know, I didn't. I mm. didn't know that game. You know, the only way I was going to do it is if I could find a solid arbitrage strategy. And because you know, I know how much the edge there is in arbitrage. And this strategy, you know, I could back test it. I knew there was edge there. You know, if I jumped in, I, I, I started this strategy like right at the top. If I jumped into crypto, just, you know, trying to trade, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum or these altcoins, I would have got absolutely destroyed. So, yeah. you know, you can't yeah, just say, well, if you, you know, if you're not making money in, uh, you know, UK stocks, we'll jump to U US stocks or jump to, you know, futures. Well, you can, you know, it's still tough in these markets. You got to have a strategy. If some, you know, if I'm a you know, if I'm a US equity trader and some crypto trader says, hey, I've got this amazing strategy with edge. This is how it works, bang, bang, bang. And I can look in and, you know, see all the mechanics. And yes, it has edge, okay. I'm probably stubborn not to do that. But if someone, you know, some, some guy at the bar tells me, oh, wow, you know, I'm, you know, man, I'm killing it in crypto. Like, okay, you know, that doesn't necessarily, you know, should I just switch to, you know, Yeah, crypto? it doesn't necessarily mean they will keep it either. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah you made, that was a great point. You got to, you, you know, the market, yes, plays a big point, but the bigger part is your strategies. Do you have edge and, you know, are, do you have a way to execute these strategies efficiently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can remember in, in both 2017 and 2020, you know, people would message me and tell me what coins to buy. And, uh, you know, one, one of them was called Safe Moon. I think I had like three different friends like message me and ask me like, oh, have you heard about this safe moon? And they'd found it on YouTube. And what it was, was this person had partnered up with some person who had like a big influence on YouTube, given them like a load of, you know, coins or warrants or whatever of the coin and just said, right, here's a load of the coin. Now you talk it up and, and get the price going. And then you can exit with a profit. And then obviously the, the founder was quite happy as well because he could get out with a profit but this thing went up like several hundred percent in a few days um and people were still buying it and you just think like that is nuts um just yeah yeah just the, the idea that people will buy something because of, of fomo and and if you get emotional like that and you know some of the, some of these are really you know clever guys who got degrees you know one of them is a doctor um you know, very, very smart people, but willing to throw a lot of money into something they don't actually understand just because they've seen a YouTube video on it. And um, yes, yeah, so, uh, someone else this week, uh, 38k down the drain because they transferred money to um, some Bitcoin website that, that had a, a, a strategy. And, you know, the amount of scams out there, yeah. not even that good scams that suck people in based on emotions is is incredible no it's a you know like it's a powerful thing you know making money getting rich and it seems the easy way to do it yeah you know people are fed this 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 and they see 
you know, especially 2020, 2021, everyone's getting rich off Bitcoin or GME or game. You know, it's it's easy money. It's uh, it's human nature, right? We want to, you know, yeah. I can either go get a job and bust my ass for, you know, a few years or, you know, I can buy this shit coin and, you know, make the same amount of money. Or at least I think I can in, you know, a few days. Not well, the easy way, but... Yeah. As we well, know. Sometimes you can if you get out before the rugs. You can. I know that. You know there there are stories out there where people hit it, they walk away, and you know they there's a nice happy ending. But I think we mm-hmm. know that typically these stories end uh, you know end badly for all those involved. Yeah, I mean that actually happened to me before with a company called Cloud Tag. Um, you know, I was holding this 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 stock and they had a product which uh had some guy posted a blog with like really tenuous links to apple and cisco and you know it was it was going to be in microsoft's products and you know for, for whatever reason people just loved it and the stock just went through the roof but th- the funny thing is the product kept kept getting delayed like time and time again and after the third time it was like delayed I was thinking this isn't right. Um, this sounds a bit weird, um, and and I was in. I used to join all of these direct message groups about stocks, which were basically like either pump rooms or everyone singing from the same hymn sheet. But I was quite naive, so I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but because I asked the question, doesn't anyone else think it's weird that the product has been delayed three times? Like I got booted from the group, and it was like an instant wake up call that this was just like everyone was so emotionally involved in it and i didn't want to be in it and i was going to sell and i thought but why am i going to sell if if the price is going to go up because these people are just going to recruit more and more people and you know the the guy with the website is telling everyone about it you know this thing could go a lot higher so you know it did end up being a fraud and i was quite certain it was a fraud but i thought well you know as long as it doesn't go bust like tomorrow then you know, I'll hold on for another few weeks and just sell yeah. out on the way up, which is I insane when you think about it. But yeah, yeah, th- I mean, thinking rationally, a lot of times get yourself in trouble in the, in the, you know, in, in investment. You know, if you're going, oh, GME, you know, why is this, why is this, uh, you know, video game retailer trading at twenty bucks? Why is it trading at forty? You would have shorted it. Why is it trading at fifty? You would have shorted it. It's eighty. You know, you would have just got absolutely destroyed. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking, so, so you know, rationally, carted out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Same with like all these, uh, you know, shit coins. You know, they everyone knew they were worthless, but you know, they they go straight up. You take advantage of it. Um, you know, that's 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 you know, the, the, the how bubbles work. Um, and that's you know, that's that's always been a problem. My trade, I you know, you kind of think too rationally, and oh, this should happen in this, and you know, why is the market going up? Why is the market going down? There's all this bad news, and that's why I, you know, I think the best thing is just just forget about any kind of rationality and you know if it's strong you buy you know if it wants to go up you buy if it wants to go down you sell it just react just react to what's actually happening you know and we like you said i keep going back to it we're not forecasters we don't have you know all these tools more you think you know for, uh, the traders i talk to like more i hear i think i feel um i hope you know that's these are these are the last words i want to you know yeah. I, w- I want to hear from uh, I want to hear from traders. Just react to you know whatever the market gives you. Take advantage of it. And if you know if there's a lot of edge in the strategy or a lot of edge doing something, you know hit it and hit it good. Just make sure you know as soon as it as soon as it ends or as soon as it pops in your face, you know you don't get back all those profits or you know you don't don't destroy your account. But yeah, mm-hmm. don't 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 think don't feel whatever you know if the market wants to give you that, do it. Take advantage of it. Who knows yeah. where these stocks are, you know, the value of these stocks. Who knows the value of these coins? You know, it's, that's, we're not, we're, tra- we're traders, we're day traders or, you know, short-term traders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a point in, in the book where you talk about uh, 9-11 and the guy who was adamant that everyone should buy stocks to, to well, I mean, I guess he must have thought himself as uh, bailing out the market, but I can't really imagine that went too well for him. 
Nah, this is, again, this is one of the instances of, uh, you know, don't mix morals and trading, which of course is, uh, you know, mm. like we we're talking about earlier, it's not, you know, there's not too many morals in this, uh, you don't get rewarded for, you know, staying on the high ground and be really moralistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what that, I mean, that's when it, that was right at the beginning of my trading career. And I, I was, a, I was a newbie. I, I had no idea what was going on. And I remember, I remember walking, you know, when the, the day of 9-11 hit, I walked in the office and it was, it was right before the market opened. And, you know, I, we, us new guys were looking at the, the TVs and it was like, oh, wow, you know, in shock and horror, looking at the, you know, these, these planes flying into the, the, the World Trade Center. And, you know, the last thing on my mind was like trading. I was, you know, it's just, just, what the hell is going on? Yeah. But can you, I look over and, I, you know, the, the savvy veterans, they're there, you know, trading away, getting in and out, you know, do, doing all the trading. Of course, you know, now I know that that's the type of stuff, you know, this, us traders take a, you know, that's volatility, that's uncertainty. You know, that's what we, you know, don't say unfortunately take advantage of. It's just the way, that's just the way trading works. Um, so, yeah, and then, of course, they had a little yeah. time to do their trading, and then the, mar the market got closed, I think, for about a week. And then when it reopened, we all, you know, we all, all those traders got back in the office. And, <clears throat> yeah, we did get too much coaching back then, but this this one time, one of the, the, the respected senior traders, he stood in front of us before the market opened. And he was, you know, he gave, I, I respected him for what he was saying. It was, it was, you know, it was patriotic and it was, uh, you know, it was good for him to say. He said, you know, I'm not going to do anything but buy stocks today. You know, I don't think we should be shorting stocks today. Um, you know, and he didn't give us, you know, guilt trip. He didn't, you know, he didn't kind of, he just, he just said that that was what he was going to do. And he, I think he said he, uh, I suggest or, you know, I, you know, but he didn't put too much pressure on anyone. And of course the market, you know, just, just puked. Um, yeah. I'm assuming he got hit pretty, pretty hard. And I, I don't, I don't know how the rest, you know, I don't know how the rest of the office did, but you know, if, you know, it was, it was, it was nice of him to say that, but look, you know, he paid dearly. And again, I, mm. you know, I, would that would would that have helped the you know the u.s economy this guy you know this day trader in himself a, up you know office you know buying stocks i don't think that was you know i don't think that's what the u.s needed at the moment um and again i've, I've gotten myself in trouble before you know i i will sell a stock because i don't like the ceo or you know i'll do, I do stupid things like that you know and there's no money that was lvs wasn't it i think yeah again i yeah. that was part of the reason i sold the lvs because oh, no. I didn't, you know, I dug into it a little bit and their CEO didn't, his politics didn't really align with mine. So that was gave me another reason to sell. And again, it could probably cost me, you know, millions of dollars, this stupid uh, oh, ideology, no. <laughs> you know, my moral high ground. Um, and I, you know, I end up, you know, 10 or, you know, 15 years later, I'm, you know, dead broke, sleeping on my, you know, on my dad's couch. Well, you know, because I, you know, I didn't like this, this CEO. So... Yeah, we, you know, as a trader, we don't like it. Don't think too much. Don't dig into it. Don't have opinions. If A does this, then I do this. You know, the best strategy is, you know, like I said, if gold goes up, then I buy this gold stock. I'm not thinking. I don't care what the, you know, the the mechanics of who owns what. It's just purely, you know, purely mechanical. And then, you know, as long as you've got a, a strategy with the edge, thinking, feeling, predicting, speculating. You know, it just it just call it, it biases, and yeah. you know these biases can really cause you know a lot of pain. So yeah, this guy, and again, I you know this this guy he paid he paid deeply. And I, to be honest, I don't think he, you know he lasted too much longer. That probably helped end his trading career. Yeah, which is pretty horrible. I mean, it, it's a pretty horrible situation. But yeah, I didn't I didn't realize the market was shut for like a week. Um, yeah, it was. That it, is it, that's crazy because even during COVID, nothing was nothing was shut. Yeah, no, it was, a, it was, it was, a, you know, it was, a, it was a crazy time. And that's when I first started. And, you know, I, that, those were wild times back then. You had, you know, you had, co uh, sorry, 9-11. After that, you had all these anthrax scares. And the market was, this is when the market was kind of transitioning from its old school, you know, specialists on the floor. And it yeah. just actually switched from uh, fractions. I mean, that shows how old I am. It switched from fractions <laughs> to decimals. Um, so it was, you know, it, the market was, it was, it was different times back then. And it, the sad thing was, 
even I was a newbie and I was, of course, it was losing money. Like I said, I got 40,000 in the hole. But even the top traders back then, when I got, when I went in for my job interview, they were like, oh, we've got this guy on the floor. He made $20,000 last month. And of course I was like, oh wow, 20 grand. But looking back, I'm like, what the, you know, these guys were terrible. You know, they should have been making, you know, 20 million in a year, in a month, you know, knowing, knowing how, you know, knowing now I know what guys are making today or, you know, the last couple of years or even 2008, you know, compared to, you know, how easy it was back then. So different, you know, different times back then. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes me think like, what will the market be like in 10 years? Like is AI going to completely take everything over? I mean, my, view not that i trade it is that ai will sort of boost productivity a huge amount and free up a lot of labor time which will be better better spent on other things and it will drive the s p because corporate earnings will just go through the roof with lower costs and higher productivity but you know what what does that mean for the market are we going to see ai traders um and we already have algos so um, you know, is it going to be too different? But but the market that I trade in a lot of the time, uh, yes, there are algos, but, you know, you, you can still make money. So, you know, for example, Rolls-Royce, Marks & Spencer's, like two trades I've taken in the last few weeks, huge companies. Uh, Marks & Spencer's isn't FTSE 100 anymore, but it was. Rolls-Royce is FTSE 100. You know, they, they put up good earnings better than expected and then they gap up and then you buy them in the auction but they continue going i mean post earnings announcement drift it it is real and it's known about it's known about edge and yet you know people who aren't smart like me can still trade it and make money so is is that edge going to be wiped out now because of ai but everyone knows about it anyway and it still exists so yeah i, I, I don't know what will actually change? I'm sure, I'm sure it probably will, but it's just hard to imagine. I, from I, you know, of course, I think you know, you're right. The market is changing, and it has changed since I traded. You know, the the bots, the algos have taken over. The market's a lot more efficient. You know, you know, as a glitch hunter, the scraps generally are tougher to come by because you know these these bots. You know, if there's an inefficiency or arbitrage, you know, they're they're in it. They they sense it quick, and you know, they suck it out. But I, you know, I'm off to, as a glitch hunter, you know, changes in the market structure a lot of time present opportunities. Like I was just talking about, you know, back when it went from kind of special old school specialists on the floor taking orders to this electronic, there was a lot of, there's a lot of changes in the market that presented opportunity, especially for glitch style or day traders or even scalpers. So, yeah, excuse me, uh, who knows? I mean, again, uh, I just, I, I think it's good when the foundations of the market are, are, are shook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, it could cause, you know, who knows what's going to, you know, as a true, of course, my style, I'm hoping for kind of mayhem. I'm hoping for the average investor is not, not hoping that for, for me, I want mayhem. I want the markets to shake. I want glitches. Yeah. I want flash crashes. I want volatility. I want all this stuff. And again, if the, mar the, the dynamics of the market change kind of, you know, suddenly or even, you know, slowly, I think it could present some opportunity. You know, I, you know, if we all of a sudden have a huge spike in volatility and, you know, we've got all these bots and all these AI programs running things and then, you know, they get unplugged, you, you know, things could go absolutely haywire. And then yeah. the old school guys like me could step in and that's really where, you know, we, we make, our, make our cash because, you know, the markets are, right now, the markets are efficient and really, what I do, I'm a dinosaur. Me pointing and clicking, it's it's old school trading. And mm -hmm. you know, though I think the bots have the, the edge right now. But when you know the volatility in, in normal, really gets in, in normal low vol environments, yes, algos will win. Because yeah. they just won't make mistakes. Um and they will just grind it out forever and, and they're just way more patient than we are. But yeah, in in times of high volatility, they need to be switched off, otherwise they'll blow blow people yeah. up. That's when we, that's when the edge, you know, that's when we have the advantage. That's when we have the mm -hmm. edge. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping for something like that. I'm hoping for, you know, of course, I don't want to, you know, catastrophes and stuff like that, but, you know, volatility or, you know, just, to, you know, just change in the market structure because right, you know, right now, 
you know, especially when the volatility is low, it's the market, especially the equity markets I'm looking at there. It's, it's, it's hard work for, a, yeah. you know, trying to scrape out scraps and pick up scraps and look for arbitrage and look for these glitches. Uh, you know, when, when things get shaken up, it's a, it's a, it's a lot easier for, for, for me oh, and, def and definitely. traders like myself. Yeah. But, but also I know a couple of the guys who did trade post 2008, you know, the early stage bull market, they said because the expectations of everything was so low, you know, a company will put out bad news and it's not as bad as everyone expected and the stock would just go up and it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, yeah, we haven't, we haven't seen that yet. Um, but, you know, when we do get to that early bull stage, I think there will be a huge opportunity for those who are, who've still got some cash left, who are quite, you know, brave and they haven't been worn down psychologically taking loss after because it is demoralizing and like death by a thousand cuts um so if, if you can keep not only your physical capital but your psychological capital when the market turns if you're sort of fresh and ready you could probably do quite well um yeah no so, there's a, yeah. there's a, and that's the exciting thing about being a trader you know I, i'll sit here and bitch about how slow it is how tough it is right now mm -hmm. but tomorrow could be the greatest trading day ever yeah you know and we do have this huge AI is, you know, this is this is crazy technology. This is mm. it is going to change. Should change the world. It is going to change the world, and it's going to change. You know, this we could have this huge, you know, bubble. You know, we could have a huge run, or it could, you know, shake up the you know the structure of the market. It's who knows. But the you got of course I I have hope. But there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going out. You know, there's a lot of stuff going. The world's changing fast now. There's a lot of stuff going on. You got AI. You've got COVID. You've got you know this. The, the politics is is probably as uh, unstable as it's been. Yeah. You've got you know I'm living in Poland. I got a war, you know a huge war yeah. on my doorstep. You know again if you said all this stuff was going to happen, you know three or four years ago, even like oh wow, nah, you know no, the yeah. volatility would be a you know. 60 70 80 it's a 15 and that's great you know that's good that's crazy to me so you know i, I do think there's you know that there there's you know this is going to be interesting we're in an interesting time and it will be you know an interesting time not only for the world but again for the markets and that's what any trader you know i it's it is exciting you know but you got to be there you got to yeah. stay alive don't blow out your account make sure you're there for this uh <laughs> this yeah. next bull run or this next volatility explosion or this next great glitch trade, whatever it is, you, you know, if, you, if you're if you not there, you, you're not going to take advantage of it. That's a, that's a hundred percent sure. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Yeah. You got to sort of, yeah. Cause I mean, the people we spoke about who sort of left the market, they're not going to be around for the next bull run because they didn't manage the risk and they, they, they haven't kept the place at the table. Um, but yeah, one of the next big cards, I think will be the, the resolution of the Russo Ukrainian war. I think depending obviously on what what the outcome is not only will that provide certainty but it could it could be a huge geopolitical event you you don't know it it could be I mean it already is um this war that you know the market just clearly hadn't considered at all um and I actually came across an essay from Putin some months after where he was talking about Ukraine um, I think it was like from 2018 or something and it, it what he wrote it was very clear that in his words that he was very aggressive towards them and you know if I'd have read that before I wouldn't have been as surprised when when the tanks and everything rolled through um, so yeah I mean some people who might have just got lucky and seen that and uh, made a really good trade out of it. I mean, I personally, I should have done a lot better, um, but it's a learning point. But yes, yeah, certainly the, the resolution you... of the war will be, I think, a big card. Yeah, you have to, I, like I say, I'm, I'm waiting for volatility. I'm waiting for the market. So I'm waiting for, you know, action. But you also have to plan, have a plan for this action. Mm. Yeah, you have to, you know, have strategies. You have to have a way to take advantage of it. It's no good to go, oh, well, I'm waiting for the, you know, a new trader, I'm waiting for the volatility to pick up. Okay, how are you going to take, take advantage of the volatility? You know, and again, how, what's your plan to stay alive and grind out profits or, you know, survive when the, when the going's bad? It's all good waiting for this or, you know, we're on the horizon of this or I think this is going to happen without a plan. And I know, you know, a second, if this, ha you know, when COVID hit, 
I was, you know, my strategies 100% change. I dropped these strategies I was using mm -hmm. in the slow dull market to, to grind out cash and I flipped in, okay, where's the money at? Where, you know, where is the edge? Where can I be aggressive? You know, I, I knew that, okay, COVID's gonna affect airlines. COVID's gonna affect cruise lines. Gold was going crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna go that. You know, talk to, you know, I talked to my brother and all the traders and, okay, where, what are you doing? Where, what are these guys doing? You know, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's having the plan and reacting to these situations. Volatility, market mayhem, bull markets, all this is, you know, there provides opportunity to make money. But again, you got to have the strategy, you got to have the strategies to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are wise words. Um, so I think, I think to wrap it up, um, I mean, you've already given a lot of great advice already. Uh, but if there was someone new listening to this today, and to be honest, I think you've already answered this question, what advice would you give those people starting out fresh in the market today? Uh, don't do it now. Uh, <laughs> what I, what I, make sure a, first of all, you, you know, you, this is something you're passionate about. You have the financial backing, you know, what if it, what, what are you gonna do if it doesn't work? Do you have the money to fall back on? Do you have the skills to go get a job? You know, are you willing to wait year, two years, three years to start making money? If you can answer that, if you answer those questions and you think you have the traits to be a good trader, yeah, are you competitive? You know, can you handle risk? Um, are you up for, you know, a big, a big challenge where not, you know, 95% fail? If you, you know, if you, you can, you can and that's, a, there's very few people I think qualify, you know, for those, those questions I just asked. If you answered yes to all those, then okay, well then make sure, A, try and get a job at a prop firm. A pro, a not, a, you know, a, one of these Twitter alf, you know, fund your funded account prop yeah. firm, bullshit things. So, you know, a proper prop firm where you're, you know, working with a bunch of other traders, you have an office or at least, you know, support. Um, if you can't get a job there, make sure you have some type of mentor, you know, and a, not a reliable mentor, someone you know who knows the market, who's been profitable. Make sure you have support. Try and, you know, join an office with other traders, um, preferably guys who, who know what they're doing. And, you know, get, watch, you know, start your education by watching, you know, you've got some good videos. I've seen your videos. There's plenty of other guys, you know, have podcasts who have interviews. Um, search, you're saying search Twitter. Find, you know, filter out, you, it's tough to filter out the bullshit, but there's good stuff out there. Find a couple of traders who really respect and, you know, see what their, you know, their content is, see who they're following. Find these YouTube videos and, you know, get yourself that free education as you can. But they're also, you know, you, you have to, you have to put the time in and there are good courses out there. If you can't get a, you know, start at a prop firm, you just have to, you know, ask around and, but be prepared. Don't do it by yourself. Don't do it by yourself. Don't do it by yourself. Don't think you can do it by yourself. You won't. Zero percent chance. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great answer. And read uh, cash rules as well. Read cash rules. Yeah. yeah. Read cash rules and you make. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Read cash rules and you make a million dollars. It's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> Forget what I just said. That's that's the only advice I have. Uh, no. Nah. Again, I do think the book can help traders. Again, I try to give. Oh, it I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Honest yeah, take, and I talk about this glitches and so on, but that, of course, that was a joke. What I said, it, it can, it can, it can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if people who are listening want to follow you on social media, David, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a huge social. Follow. I'm trying to build some type of social media. I, I'm on Twitter at Cream Trader. Um, I have a website, David Dash Hale, and I, I do. I have posted some stuff for the book on there, and some stuff about glitches. So there's some some educational stuff and I try to post some stuff on Twitter and you know feel free to hit me up with questions and stuff I love I love talking trading and you know don't the, don't just say can you please throw me a glitch uh, strategy <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't have my own right now and it's not that easy but I you know I'm happy to help but if you do have one you're probably there. unlikely to share it as well yeah, I, I would you know I do but I am willing to help but yeah if I have a golden glitch strategy no, yeah. I'm not. Sure. I'm not sharing it with you. I'm not sharing it with you. If anyone sh and if any guy says I'm going to share this amazing glitch strategy with you, you know, it's not a, probably not an amazing glitch strategy unless it's this guy on YouTube who I 
you know yeah <laughs> the ico strategy from Cra- crazy that isn't it and, and i think you actually sent him an email right um yeah i mean i've been thinking i find uh, recently i heard back from him i keep thanking him it's funny this guy he sells like tungsten rings and you know it's just like a, he's an interesting character great i mean dude, save my ass great guy mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't you know i think he just kind of did out naive you know he was naive because you know you shouldn't Especially a good strategy, any yeah. you know, any kind of strategy. There are strategies that you know you you can scale, and people do share. And I, I share a couple of stories about those in in the book. But uh, generally, you know, if you have a good strategy, keep your mouth shut. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> good advice. Unless yeah. unless people you share it to someone else and they share back, you know, just share. But yeah, be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, look, David. Thanks a lot for your time. I mean, it's been a lot of fun, and um, yeah. Get cash rules on Amazon and you can follow David on Twitter, Cream Trader. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Right. In. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. And again, thanks for putting all the good stuff you're putting out there.